Today I am here with Jim Davis from UF IFAS Sumter County Extension. He's the Florida Yards and Neighborhoods Extension Agent and his job is to make your landscapes look beautiful and healthy and still be environmentally responsible too. So we're entering our driest time of year and it's very important to make sure that your irrigation system is functioning properly. So Jim, why is it important to inspect your irrigation system at this time of year? It's very important that you do that because you can have a malfunctioning, um, malfunctioning irrigation system. So, for example, on this slide one, you know, we have different types of heads. So there's a lot of different components in that irrigation system that need to be maintained. Um, if it doesn't get maintained, your grass can stress out and it can get a disease or a pest. So we like to encourage homeowners to at least inspect their irrigation system monthly between the growing season, you know, March through September. But they should definitely do it this time of year, spring, right when everything's starting to grow. Absolutely, because you know we're also in one of the driest times of the year too, so it's important to get that irrigation system working correctly. Right. Now I get this question all the time, how much water should a homeowner apply to their landscape? You should apply between a half an inch to three quarters of an inch of water. And this is one of the most common mistakes that we see homeowners do. They'll ask, you know, is 30 minutes enough, 45 minutes? You know, each system's different. You know, you need to calibrate your system accordingly. And this slide right here will show you how to do what we call the tuna can test. And you take six to nine empty straight-sided cans, put them out in the zone, irrigate, and whenever you get done irrigating, just measure how much water you have in each of those cans. You should have between half an inch to three quarters, and that's going to determine the run time for your irrigation system. Okay, so if you have more than three quarters of an inch in that tuna can test, then you may need to decrease, decrease your time. watering time? Absolutely. Okay, and less than you would need to increase your watering time. Uh -huh. Okay, so people can get healthy by eating lots of tuna fish. Then. Absolutely. Okay, so um, another question I have about watering is what's the best time of day? My neighbors, some of them water in the evening, some of them water in the early morning. Mm -hmm. Is there a recommended time? You want to water between 2 to 7 a.m in the morning. Um, that is the best time. Um, that will reduce your chance of getting a disease. Um, you certainly don't need to be watering at 9 o'clock in the evening. You know, that's probably one of the worst times when to water. Uh, so just make sure you get water between 2 to 7 in the morning and you'll, and you'll be fine. Okay. Well, I notice sometimes that my irrigation heads get clogged and, you know, is that, I guess what's the best way to unclog those irrigation heads or to inspect for clogged irrigation heads? Uh, one of the common mistakes well, one of the common problems we see in landscapes are the irrigation heads. And a lot of people um, don't realize that these get clogged. They prevent water from getting to the turf grass, and they need to be cleaned. So, for example, you know, this is a rotor. You know, this primarily waters your turf grass. And there's a little filter in here that needs to be changed, and you just unscrew it. And at the base of it, you probably need some pliers to pull it out. But there's a little filter, you know, and you can clean this out. Make sure it's not clogged, put it right back in, and, put, and screw this back in. If this is clogged, it's not going to put out enough water, and your grass is going to get stressed, um, and then, you know, you can have problems to get um, set in. Okay. Well, you know, I've also had from time to time, like I'll have a rock in a place, and it will block that irrigation head or, um, you know, plants or something like that. Is it easy to adjust these things, and how should you do it? It is. It's very easy to adjust them. There's a little watering key, and you, get, you know you got to make sure that uh, you know your whole system's working properly. So, for example, in this slide right here, you make sure you don't have any geysers coming up in the landscape. And um, in this next slide, you'll see uh, sand coming up on the irrigation head that can be a broken pipe. And if you need to adjust them, like I said, you can use a little watering key, or um, you can simply use your hand. You know, in this slide right here, you know you're seeing a stressed turf grass. Um, there's a nice little perfect arc of dead grass. Um, that's showing you that that grass needs to be watered. That grass is probably blocked by the shrubs and, or, or it's clogged. Uh, so it's very important that you do that very simple routine maintenance on those irrigation heads. Now what about irrig irrigation controllers? I know mine can be kind of difficult to understand. There's several different controllers out on the market. Uh, homeowners need to be familiar on how to work them. Uh, for example, on this slide right here, you know, this is a hunter. And um, make sure that the battery's replaced in that, you know how to operate it. And uh, there's rain birds and climbers. Just be familiar on um, what zones are watering what and make sure that, that all of those clocks, the, the, um, the batteries, are changed at least once a year. Okay. 
What about rain sensors? I know a lot yeah. of people have rain sensors, and I know that when the rain sensor is wet and it does rain, it's supposed to turn your irrigation system off. Is there a way to maintain those? Absolutely. This is one of the um, different sensors, moisture sensors out there. This is a rain sensor, probably the most common one out here. And uh, this is on the eve of your house. And what this does is, you know, whenever it rains, <clears throat> the, uh, it shuts down your irrigation system. So it saves a lot of water, but you have to make sure these are working properly. Um, there's little washers in here. And if these little washers get damaged or cracked, then that can uh, cause it to not work like it should. Now, there's a very safe way on how to check these. Um, what you do is you just turn on your irrigation system, okay, and take your garden hose, aim it towards your rain sensor, and water your rain sensor. So you're just wetting that rain sensor? Exactly. Okay. And that'll shut off your irrigation system. That'll let you know if it's working properly. If not, um, you probably need to have a professional come in and, um, and fix it. Well, how do we, are there other ways that homeowners can make their irrigation systems more efficient? Absolutely. Um, one of the most common problems that we see is mixed heads in a zone. So you'll see the rotors like the one I was showing you before, and there are smaller ones called pop-ups. Um, and whenever you have these two irrigation heads on the same zone, um, it's going to affect the pressure, um, it's going to affect the timing. So some plants are going to get watered more than others, because typically we see pop-ups, the smaller ones, watering your shrubs, and these water your turf grass. And you have to water these, you know, for a very long time, and the pop-up's a very short time. So all in all, you end up overwatering your shrubs. Um, so it's, you'll have a more efficient system when you keep the same heads on the same zone um, to start with. Okay. And what about separating, like, shrubs and turf? Because I know turf likes a lot of water, but shrubs maybe not so much. Yeah, turf grass is totally different from your ornamental shrubs. And because, you know, it has a shorter root system, so it needs water at least average of, you know, once a week in the growing season. Your shrubs have a deeper root system, so on average they can get away with a lot um, less frequency of, of irrigation. So, you know, if you separate your irrigation zone, you know, just watering your shrubs and then watering your turf grass, um, you can save a lot of water um, in that landscape and you, have a cr you can create a healthier landscape. Uh, in the long run by just doing that simple step. You can also go a step further um, by um, converting some of your irrigation system, for example, on your shrubs uh, to a micro-irrigation system. Um, that'll help save a lot more in the long run, too. Okay, and a micro-irrigation system just puts out uh, less water, or how does that work? Well, it puts out water directly to the root zone. That's okay. how that works. And what it does, there's kits that you can buy at you know, your local stores that are very easy um, to attach your irrigation system, you can attach them to your hose bib on your house, or you can convert it to your, to your the piping, the existing piping in your irrigation system. These are very, very simple systems to use. And uh, if you have a separate bed with a shrub, and it, or shrubs or perennials, I definitely encourage homeowners to, to go that route. Okay. Well, thank you, Jim. Is there a place where people can find more information? Absolutely. You know, solutionsforyourlife.com is a great um, website, and also the Southwest Florida Water Management District's website, watermatters.org. They have a lot of uh, free uh, fertilizing guides and videos out there that are um, readily available for the homeowner, so um, take advantage of that. Okay, well, thank you, Jim, for teaching us how to have a beautiful lawn and landscape. All right, thank you.